Hi, welcome to the beginner sewing course. Um, the first one that I've run and put on YouTube. I'm used to running these in my shop um, with a room full of people, cups and tea and biscuits, and um, <clears throat> probably a little bit more relaxed than me being on my own in my kitchen. So bear with me. Um, I've got my dog somewhere kicking about, a um, little chihuahua that will probably bark at some point. So. And of course, being in isolation, I've got the kids and husbands at home, so I expect they'll be downstairs at some point. But anyway, I'm gonna carry on with this course. It was supposed to be um, a YouTube live video. Um, that's coming, my live videos. Once I've worked out how to do it, I'm nearly there. <clears throat> but in the meantime, I'm gonna film um, some beginner's sessions for you. And hopefully um, it should help if you're trying to learn a new skill <coughs> or you're, um, just want a bit of support or a bit of um, company then hopefully this should help with you with that today so the cushion cover course that we usually do is to make a really simple patchwork cushion cover you've got the four squares at the front <clears throat> and the back is um, an envelope cushion can I just say my cough it's just a cough. I've just eaten a digestive biscuit and it got stuck in my throat, so I'm fine, not sick. <laughs> just got a biscuit in my throat. <clears throat> anyway, so that's the cushion cover that we're gonna be making. Um, so hopefully you've got prepared your um, pieces of fabric that you need. So I'm gonna be using our nautical theme today to demonstrate. So you've got your two squares cut from one piece, nine inch squares. And then you've got your two squares cut from your second piece. Right. And then obviously you've got the two back pieces, which we'll come to. Before we start, I just want to go through some really simple things on the sewing machine. So if you do know this, you can either pause me, um, forward me. Um, I'm sure that's what most people want to do, is just forward me and stop me talking. So go for it. Um, <clears throat> you can or you can watch this um so there's a few things when sewing um if you're hand sewing today i have tried to do a demonstration and i've actually deleted that video because it turns out i cannot demonstrate hand sewing on a camera so basically you're going to if you're hand sewing then lucky you because you're going to be able to sit and leisurely sew this with the tv on in the background with a cup of tea um and take your time um so with the hand sewing if you're sewing pieces together you want to be doing a really small running stitch or there's a back stitch that you can do where the stitch goes back on itself but if you just do a small running stitch that should be plenty um, at holding the, the fabric together <clears throat> so if you're hand sewing then you follow this construction of the cushion cover in exactly the same way as you would if you're using the machine um, hand sewing you've got to remember you're going to be tying a knot <clears throat> at the beginning to make sure that the thread doesn't come all the way through and you're going to be doing some really small stitches to keep your pieces of fabric together but I'll come on more to that on the sewing machine there's a few things if you've got your sewing machine out you're really unsure you've not used it before if you've got your bobbin thread and it's ready to go well done that's like the first thing that you need to figure out. So if you've got that far, brilliant. You're practically all, already there. Um, if you heard that beep, my machine beeps all the time. It was because my presser foot wasn't down. So you've got a little lever on the side here. Let me just move my camera around. Find the lever, it's to the right underneath this arm. And that puts your presser foot up and down. If you found that, if it's up and you try to put your foot pedal down, it, it beeps. Well, it, it, yours might not beep, but this one does. Um, to tell me that something's wrong. The press of foot needs to be down. And it's in that down position because it secures your fabric. Okay? So underneath your press of foot, you've got what's called feed dogs. And these are what takes your fabric through the machine. And they're just like little feet. So you don't need to push or pull your fabric through the sewing machine. As long as you're guiding it with both hands, 
um, your machine will take the fabric through. You can let go and see what happens, but you can guide it. You can see I've got some brown tape marked on here. Um, I usually use masking tape, but I've left that at the shop. So I'm using mask, um, some brown tape at the moment. Your metal plate on your sewing machine has got lots of um, seam allowance guides. <clears throat> the pattern that we're doing today is a half an inch. Um, I tend to work in inches when doing patchwork or cushion covers. Um, obviously you can convert that to centimetres. Um, so I found the inch marks on my machine and I've put some tape against the half an inch line because this is going to show me my seam allowance. So when I'm sewing, the edge of my fabric is going to be running in line with the edge of the tape. Okay, so that's your sewing machine. Okay, I'm just going to turn it round. So hand sewers, when you start sewing, you use your needle and thread and you've tied a knot and you start to sew and because you've tied that knot, you know that what you're sewing, that seam, isn't going to come undone. Machine sewers, get a piece of scrap fabric. I just want to make sure that we're all aware of the back stitch. So we have machine sewers. We've got the same thing as a knotted needle and thread. Um, I must work out where the camera is on this. I think it's there. So I keep trying to look at that. Okay, so um, you've got what's called a back stitch button. I'm just going to turn my machine around again, actually. On my machine, it's this button here. I don't know if you can see. Probably not. <laughs> There's a little backwards arrow. If I tip my machine, the camera's on a tripod and I know if I move it, the whole thing is just gonna collapse. Okay, so we've got this little backwards arrow here, okay? When I use this on my machine, now your machine might be very similar to this. I go forward a couple of stitches. So I put my foot down on my presser foot. Oh, sorry, on my um, foot pedal. I go forward a couple of in stitches. I hold on to that back button. And as I'm holding on, it goes backwards. Okay, so I go forward. I hold on to it. We go backwards a couple of stitches. I let go and then continue to sew. And basically, what that's doing is creating the locking stitch that's needed for um, beginning and the end of each seam. If you can get into the habit of doing a back stitch before and before you start a, a seam, a row of stitching, and when you finish that row of stitching, that's going to be ideal for um, sewing for all projects. Always get into the habit of doing a back stitch. So. Let's practice that again. You're going to go forward a couple of rows, uh, sorry, forward a couple of stitches, hold on to it, go back a couple of stitches, then let go, and then continue sewing. When you get to the end of your seam, you're going to go backwards a couple of stitches, let go, and then just finish a few more stitches, and then you've locked that seam. Okay, so then lift your presser foot, Pull your fabric out and your threads and cut the threads. Okay. Um, I think I'll show you the rest as we go along. What I'll do now is we'll start constructing the cushion cover. If you're hand sewing, you might have already paused me to catch up or just to skip that bit. If you are hand sewing, start back now. Right. What we want to do is think about the positioning of our squares. So... I'm going to be creating my patchwork piece to, I want it to look something like this. So they're my four squares. I've got my top two squares and my bottom two squares. We're going to be sewing the top two squares together first. So let's move those bottom two squares, but I know which position I want them in. So I'll move those out of the way. The top two squares, when we sew, we always sew, unless otherwise, unless, well, unless told otherwise, we always sew right sides together. So you've got your two squares. If you put one on top of the other, so the right sides are touching, 
By the right side, we obviously mean the printed side. So the printed sides are touching. And then we can see that the seam that we're going to be sewing is that one down there. Can you see this? So we're going to be sewing down that seam there. So it doesn't matter when you sew whether the print's upside down, as long as we're sewing that seam. We'll pull the machine back towards me. Okay. We're going to make sure that you're lining those two edges up, okay? So you've got the left hand square laying on top of the right hand square. We're lining the seam that we're sewing, we're making sure it's nice and straight. Once you're sure it's straight, we can put some pins in. Okay, so the best way to pin is to make sure the pins are perpendicular to the seam. That word means at a right angle, I think, basically. We've attached the pin, so it's like that. I'm gonna put a few along. You're all very quiet out there. How's everyone getting on with isolation? Enjoying it? The kids there? Kids, are you sewing? Funny old time, isn't it? Okay. So, that's the seam I'm going to sew, and I've put my pins in that way round. Okay? So when we sew down here, we can whip those pins out, but if the if, we, if we're not quick in whipping those pins out, there's less damage going to be done to the needle because the needle will slip over. If the pins were running lengthways down like that, um, it's more likely to hit the, for your needle to hit a pin and snap. Um, we're going to try and whip them out quickly as we're sewing, but just in case. I'd say that's the best way to pin your fabric. Okay, so let's sew that first seam. Right, so lining up. Oh God, this, hopefully you can see this. I'm lining up the edge of the fabric with the edge of the brown tape. That is my seam allowance of half an inch. If I put my presser foot down, I'm all ready to go. Now, what do we do at the beginning? That's right, a back stitch. So, you're going to go forward. I went forward a couple of stitches, hold on to the back stitch, go backwards. If you're hand sewing, you're going to put your needle in at half an inch from the edge. So you've got that half an inch seam allowance. And your line that you're going to stitch is all the way down that first seam, but keeping it half an inch from the edge of the fabric. Remember, instead of a back stitch, you've tied your knot of your thread. Okay, so we're going to sew all the way along that seam, taking the pins out as you go along. don't need to sew fast go with whatever you feel comfortable my machine's got a speed dial just up here so if you've got that as well you might want to turn it down a bit um, because I'm impatient I usually sew too fast but you can control with your foot pedal okay so when you get to the end of that seam do a back stitch and let go cut your threads if you're fancy like me, you might have automatic thread cutters and you press the button and it all works. If not, lift your presser foot. Oh, it didn't work anyway. Pull your threads out and cut them. So, I think you may have just sewn your first seam. Yay! <laughs> so on the back, you can see that's your seam. That's your seam allowance. So the fabric to the side of your stitching that's your seam allowance. 
Okay, we're gonna put that aside, come back to that in a minute, and we're gonna sew the next two pieces of fabric. I don't know if you can see this. This time round, we're gonna be sewing the stripes to the other piece, but it's the other way round because I've laid out, I've got my top two and I want the bottom two to go as so, all right? So you're going to get your two squares, put them right sides together and again we're going to do exactly the same thing, we're going to line them up nice and neatly so that that edge is all neatly matched up and we're going to put our pins. Two or three pins should be fine, you might not even want to put any pins in but if you do I've put two in that time. Can you see? Okay. Then we're going to sew that edge together. Back stitch. Right, so I did a back stitch at the end of that row of stitching as well. If you've just paused me, welcome back. Did you get a cup of tea? Are you um, catching up? Am I talking absolute nonsense? Because I can, because I'm on my own in my kitchen. Here's your second row. So we've got the second row and you've got your top row. Okay, so the next thing we need to do and you'll find, I don't know if you can see, I've got my ironing board up in the background. It's the only time I do ironing. Only time. It's the only time the ironing board's out. It's a really fancy iron as well, but it's purely because it creates a really good seam. So we're going to press open our seams. So the back of our work is going to look as beautiful as the front. And we're going to press those seams open. So open them up, go to your iron, and press them open. So I'm just going to pop up to mine here. Right, so once you've pressed both your seams open, mind your fingers. Mm. Okay, so once you've pressed both your seams open, we're going to be attaching the top row to the back row. I'm just going to move this tripod back a bit. Okay, so there's your top row and there's your bottom row. So we need to put these together, um, do it exactly the same way as we've just done with your squares, except now we're going to be matching the central seam. So they need to be right sides together. So pop them down on the table. I'm sure Joe Wicks doesn't have these sorts of problems. Right. <laughs> there we go. Right, so we're going to lay the top piece on top of the bottom piece, right sides together. So this is the seam now, the top's at the top, this is where we're going to be sewing, all the way across here. The way that I like to make sure my seams are running nice and neat, so it's not imperative, but if you are a bit you know, you do like things to be just so, then you might want to make sure that your central seams are matching. So we do that by lining up your two pieces on top of each other, right sides together. If you 
open up here, what you want to see is like a cross. You see, we've got the two, you've got the seams running down that way and the seams going across there. Um, if you can line it with your seams up so they match nicely like that, and then get a pin, and your pin is going to go through one seam. It should then come out the back. Okay, so it's gone through the front seam. Hang on, let me try that again. It will then come out the back seam in within this. Right, so it's going to go through the seam and then out the back. And you know it's lined up because it then comes out the seam at the back. Your needle comes out the seam at the back. And it goes back in through. Okay? So can you see that? The pin has gone in the seam and it's come back out along that line of the seam. I'll do that again. So you've got the top two squares laying on top of the bottom two squares. So that is the seam that we're going to be sewing. And what we want to do is match up our seams here so that they match and make a nice neat cross once they're sewn together. So I'm lining up the two seams. I'm putting a pin in through there, in through one seam, it comes out the back of the seam, back in through the seam, and back out the seam. And that way we know it's all lined up nice and neatly. It's not the end of the world if we don't match these seams up properly, but sometimes it is nice to have a nice sharp finish. Okay, so once you've got that central pin in, you can then pop a couple more in. Do you know what, my kids have been upstairs for half an hour now without disturbing me. I'm sure they're just watching a film, but it's lovely. I feel like I should get a glass of wine. Okay, there we go. So I've pinned all the way across and I'm going to sew that in place using the same seam allowance. Oh, there's my dog. Right. Backstitch. Head, off we go. I'm still taking those pins out as I go along. threads okay if you're still sewing pause me I'll um let you catch up okay so the moment of truth and this is where we can see oh bang on how neat the right way around how neat that square is in the middle okay so there we have the front of your cushion cover. Very well done. We need to do exactly the same thing as before. We're going to press those seams open. Right, so it's annoying. So that central seam now we're going to press open and you're going to have a beautiful looking back of your cushion cover. So bear with me. Okay, 
nice, well done, you've made the front of your cushion cover. Now on to the back. Put your cushion cover the front, put it aside for now. We're now going to be um, sewing some seams. So this is, so for, well, the back of my cushion cover, I'm gonna have this as the top, the top half, and I'm gonna have the stripe as the bottom half. We need to make some seams. Um, so these are raw edges at the moment. You've cut them, they're easily frayed, and we want them to be neat so that when we insert in the cushion cover into, into the back of the cushion, um, nothing's gonna be fraying, it's nice and neat. So we're gonna get the bottom edge and you're gonna need your iron again. So I'm gonna show you and then we'll go up, do it and then come back and sew. So my top piece, it's the bottom edge that's gonna be the opening for the cushion. You're gonna fold it about a centimeter or less up towards the wrong side, press it, and then fold it again and press it. So you've got two folds, once a little bit, about a centimeter or thereabouts, and then again, another fold and press it. And then once you've done that for the top cushion, back of your cushion, we're gonna do the same with the bottom piece. However, on this piece, you're going to be sewing, um, folding and pressing the top of it because that's gonna be in the center of the cushion at the opening for the cushion pad. So exactly the same, you're gonna fold it towards the wrong side, a centimeter, and then again, and give it a good press with the sewing machine. So I'm gonna go back to my iron. I'll be back in a second. You can go do yours now. So you're pressing a seam down a centimetre. And then again. Hi. Right, so we've um, folded and pressed both of our seams, the bottom piece and the top piece. When we're sewing these, you want to um, ignore everything we said about seam allowances and we want to sew close to that folded edge there, just to hold it in place. So if you can position your fabric, um, position this piece of fabric, Underneath the needle, if you pull your needle towards you, so if you pull the wheel towards you, the needle goes down and you can see where the needle is going to hit. So I can see my needle is going to be close to the folded edge. We're going to do exactly the same thing, do a back stitch. And then we're going to sew all the way down as close to that seam as that folded edge as possible. This is going to be testing your straight lines. Finish with a back stitch. Okay, cut your threads. So I've now hemmed, I folded, pressed, and sewn all the way across that bottom piece. I'm gonna sew again, close to the folded edge of this piece.
Okay, so we have created the hem on two pieces of fabric. We've double folded it, and I don't think you can probably see the stitches. No, my thread is completely invisible to this fabric, but I've sewn all the way close to that folded edge on both pieces. Okay. Great. We're ready really to complete the cushion cover. I told you it was easy. Okay, this is going to involve some layering up. Let's go back to the piece of patchwork that we've created here. And we're going to put it on the table, right side facing up. And we're going to layer it up with the, I'm just going to move my machine out of the way. We're going to layer it up with the back pieces. So the first piece, this is the piece that you're going to see the most of. Um, so the piece that you want to be your dominant um, back envelope piece, you're going to lay on top. We're going to align the raw edges. So you're going to lay this down on top of your piece of patchwork and just align the raw edges across the top and around the sides. Don't worry if there's some fabric hanging over. It's never going to be exact unless you're completely perfect in everything that you're cutting and sewing. I'm not. Um, but it doesn't matter because we're going to be sewing this together and it's all going to be within a seam allowance. So lay that top piece on top, right sides together. And then you've got your bottom piece. Remember, you've got your seams meeting in the middle. You're going to lay that. on top of what you've just laid down. So we've now got the bottom edges aligned and the sides aligned. So we've got what's in effect your cushion cover. It's all in one square. We're gonna be sewing all the way around the edge of your cushion cover. So I would start by pinning the flaps, the openings together. So start one side, pinning the way that we did before. And then pop a couple more pins around each side. I will hold this up in a second so it's a bit clearer. And I'm probably putting two or three pins around each side. <laughs> I wish you could see under my table. My chihuahua is resting his head on my foot. <laughs> it's very warm and fluffy. <laughs> Nico, what are you doing? Come here. No, we'll say hello in a minute. Okay. So you have layered up, you've got your patchwork on one side and you've layered up right sides together. You've got your top piece layered up first with the top edges all aligned and your bottom piece laid up as well. So you've got your three layers, your patchwork, your top piece of the back and your bottom piece of the back. We're going to sew all the way around the edge <laughs> this is what's by my feet. Okay, say hi. Okay, I'm going to try and do this with a chihuahua. Do you think he's a chihuahua? I think he is. We were told he was. Okay, so we're going to Okay, so something we're going to cover now if you're hand sewing, it's not going to matter so much. Oh, you're going to sneeze. <coughs> Chihuahua flap up my nose. Um, if you're hand sewing, it's not going to matter so much because you can turn around those corners with your needle and thread. If you're machine sewing, as you go around the corners, you're going to need to pivot. So we're going to start 
half an inch in from the edge. I don't know if I can show you this. My technology's not so great. But I'm lining up the first seam half an inch from the edge. And I'm gonna sew all the way until I get to the next corner. However, because our seam allowance is half an inch, I'm going to stop half an inch from the end. I'm going to leave my needle in the down position. I'm gonna lift the presser foot up and I'm gonna pivot that round 90 degree angle. So I'm gonna then sew down the next seam. I'll try to demonstrate. Start with a back stitch. So I've stopped 90 degrees, sorry, I've stopped half an inch from the end. I'm gonna lift my presser foot. I'm gonna turn my fabric around with the needle still in the down position. And I'm gonna put my presser foot back down. You can see the next line is now, the next seam is now lined up against my half an inch mark, my half an inch mark on my sewing machine, okay? So that's pivoting around a corner. If you come to my um, after school clubs, um, if any of my girls are watching, if you come to after school clubs, they all know pivoting around a corner. It's one of the first things we learn, um, that and back stitching. They're all very good at it. So let's get all the way around our cushion cover now. lift it, turn that corner, remembering to whip those pins out, and then remembering to stop half an inch from the end, lift your presser foot, Turn the fabric 90 degrees, and I'm on my last seam. So I've just got some threads that have got caught up from, just snip those off. Okay. get to your very last, or when you get to the end of your very last seam, you do your back stitch and cut the threads. So you've hopefully, you've cut, you've sewn all the way around the edge. All that's left to do now is what's called clipping the corners. Um, so when you've got something with a corner, it's the same when you do bunting, um, you want a nice sharp corner. So we cut the corners with a pair of scissors. Just be careful not to go through the stitches. Basically, you're reducing the bulk. You can take out a little bit more fabric with those scissors if you like, but the less bulk there is inside, the sharper your corner's going to be. So you're gonna cut across all four corners. Okay, when you've done all four, it's the big reveal. So I'll push my camera back. Okay, so you've made your cushion cover. The inside is looking as beautiful as the outside is going to look. I'm gonna turn it all the way through, right sides out. Apart from some threads that need trimming, we can do that later. You have got yourself. Ta -da! If you've got a chopstick, I've got loads. My shop is right, north, well, it's right next door to 
a noodle bar. So I do tend to have a lot of chopsticks. It's also contributed to my stone and weight gain that I've had since having a shop. So push out your corners and then you've got a very fantastic envelope cushion cover that you've made. Well done. So that's the first time I've done a video tutorial. I'm sure it will get better. A little bit more practice. Um, I hope that was clear. If it's not, please message me. If you stop on any point, anything I can do to help um, whilst we're all locked in our houses. I've got a dog trying to escape out the door. I think the kids are killing themselves upstairs. So if there's anything I can do to help with this time, um, I think sewing is such a key element to mindfulness. For me, it's my time that I can switch off and forget about all the stresses of life and what's going on. And for me, sewing is that way to really lose myself. Um, it's a hobby. Um, so please don't get cross with yourselves. If something doesn't go right, we've got unpickers, we unpick those stitches, we take our time. But sewing is a hobby and it should be there to be enjoyed. So please keep your patience, um, keep practicing, keep messaging me. If you use social media, um, please hashtag Little Miss So and So or tag me at Little Miss So and So 2017. Um, so I can see what you're making. There's some hashtags being used at the moment, isolation or isolated 2020. So please use those. Um, but get sewing, get sharing and be a support. Thanks for listening to me droning on. I hope I've not gone on too much. Um, I've got no one talking back to me. It's brilliant. I will just keep on going and going and going. But I'm going to stop. See you soon. Bye.